The symptoms of a venomous snake bite include, but are not limited to the following. Puncture marks, redness, swelling, bruising, bleeding, severe pain, nausea, rapid heart rate, numbness, and if left untreated, potentially death. <clears throat> Thankfully, there are antidotes to stop the damage. However, time is of the essence. An antidote needs to be taken as soon as possible before the symptoms get worse. Venomous snakes are really harmful to humans, but there is one snake who harmed us far more than any other ever could. That snake is the great dragon, the ancient serpent, Satan. The venom wasn't in his bite, but rather in his craft. His tempting voice led our ancestors, Adam and Eve, to disobey God. With that disobedience, the deadly poison infected not just those first humans, but the entire human race. The symptoms were dire. The image of God was destroyed. We became God's enemies and were doomed to die both physically and spiritually. An antidote was desperately needed because the venom was fatal. God provided that antidote, an eternal antidote that undid the damage caused by the poison of sin. God's son is the cure for this deadly poison. God's cure would be a descendant of the children of Israel who were wandering in the desert in our reading. The Israelites had been wandering in the desert for 40 years. This was a consequence of their rebellion and lack of trust in God. They could have entered the promised land 40 years earlier, but many of them lost their courage when they heard of the powerful inhabitants they would have to face. Throughout these years of wandering, the Israelites constantly complained and grumbled. They complained so often that even the patient Moses lost his temper around them on more than one occasion. Thankfully, the 40 years were coming to an end. The old generation that was cursed to roam around the desert was dying out. The promised land was in sight. The most direct route was through Edom, a land settled by Esau's descendants. However, the Edomites refused to let them in their territory. Israel had to take a longer and much more remote route around the Red Sea. They were back in the desert again, just like before. The promised land was just one direct route away, but now they were back to where they started. To many of the already exhausted Israelites, this problem was just too much to handle. They snapped at Moses and at God. They laid into him, uh, both of them, with a familiar complaint. Why did you bring us out of Egypt just to die in the desert? Like broken records, they bemoaned their lack of food and water. Then they said something with even more of an edge to it. We detest this miserable food. With these complaints, the Israelites blamed God and Moses for all of their problems. That was bad enough. Then they, were even, they went even further in scorning God's gracious provision for them. God consistently provided manna from heaven quail, and fresh water to satisfy these ungrateful people. Not only didn't they appreciate these gifts, but they also hated them. God didn't coddle these ungrateful children. He chastised them. They complained about dying in the desert. So God sent venomous snakes to make that a reality. There they go again. All they did was gripe and whine about everything. They were rescued from slavery in Egypt. They saw God as a pillar of cloud and of fire. They heard God speaking from Mount Sinai. They received bread from heaven and water from rocks. They witnessed all sorts of amazing miracles and supernatural feats. All of that, yet still discontent. All of that, yet still ungrateful. Sound familiar? It should. We have been rescued from our slavery to sin. We see God with the eyes of faith. We're here, we hear God's voice in the words of Scripture. We receive our daily bread even without a, our asking. We are products of a miraculous conversion from unbelief to faith. All of that, and yet still discontent. All of that, and yet still ungrateful. We're not so different from those grumbling Israelites. 
we've been poisoned with the same sin with which they were poisoned. The circumstances may have changed, but the effects are still the same. What's causing us to be discontent towards God? We all have something, or perhaps someone, who makes us bitter. That thing or person that gets in our way and forces us to take an alternate route to whatever goal we hope to get in life. What makes us ungrateful towards God? He provides the daily bread, but we want more than just that. We're so accustomed to his provision that we often take it for granted. Who cares about the daily bread when there are so many other things that our poisoned hearts desire? When the Israelites were forced to take a less convenient route, they snapped. They showed God who they were and what they were more concerned about. They wanted to get out of the wilderness and get into the promised land right that second. They didn't want to meander around the desolate and arid wilderness again. Likewise, we consider our timetable to be more important than God's plans. We want what we want, and we want it now. We want to accomplish our goals now. The God of our sinful nature is ourselves. At the heart of Adam's sin in the garden was this. Who did he love more? Who did he want to serve more? Who was his God, his creator or himself? This self-loving poison has infected our hearts too. The poison is fatal. It leads to spiritual death. When the Israelites saw their brothers and sisters dying from these snake bites, it spurred them to do what they needed to do, repent and beg for God's help. They realized the severity of the situation. Likewise, our discontentment and ungratefulness force us to see the severity of our situation. We too are poisoned. We too will die. We need an antidote. Thankfully, God has a cure. God's chastisement has worked. The Israelites begged Moses to intercede for them. Moses prayed and God answered. Those who were bitten by the venomous snakes would be healed if they looked up at the bronze snake suspended on a pole for everyone to see. The bronze snake snake had no magical powers of its own. The The people's very act of looking wasn't even what healed them. Rather, it was God's promise. God's promise was this. Look at the snake, and you will be saved. This was not your typical antidote. This antidote required faith. Faith trusted in the promise, and God did all the work. God cured the Israelites of the deadly snake venom, but the venom of sin was still killing all people. So when the time was exactly right, God's Son came to our world. He was the cure for deadly poison of sin. While talking to Nicodemus in John 3, Jesus brought up the bronze snake. He told Nicodemus in verses 14 and 15, Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Jesus was talking about himself. He was the greater bronze snake. As God did all the work with the bronze snake, so God in the flesh did all the work as the greater bronze snake. Jesus was content. He was content even when he didn't have his daily bread right in front of him, like when he was in the wilderness. Uh, He was content to live off the words of his heavenly Father. Throughout his ministry, Jesus cared more for the well-being of others than for himself. He sacrificed his precious time to heal those who came to him, even when he was exhausted. Jesus was content to feed others rather than to be fed like he did with the 5,000. He provided the physical bread, and he offered something much better, the bread of life himself. God in the flesh did all the work as the greater bronze snake. He was lifted high on the cross as the bronze snake was suspended in the air. The greater bronze snake needed to die. The eternal antidote needed to suffer as a consequence of the damage sin's poison had caused. This was the only way that the venom could be removed. The bronze snake was greater than the one Moses made. This bronze snake was greater than the one Moses made. He was suspended on the cross for the whole world to look to. 
His death cured us of our most deadly poison. He offered greater blessings, the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. <clears throat> the, the blessings that come with him are eternal. He is an eternal antidote. He himself tells us, he who believes in me will live even though he dies. God's promises behind the eternal antidote were confirmed three days later. God raised Jesus to life. Since he lives forever, so too will we live forever. This is the only cure for our deadly poison. Not something we had to do for God, but rather something God did for us. Through the waters of baptism, we have been connected to the greater bronze serpent. In this sacrament, God does all the work. Plain water and mere words cannot bring life from death. The faith he gave us in baptism takes hold of the promises behind the greater bronze snake. The promises of eternal life, forgiveness, and peace with God become our most treasured possessions. The poison's damage is undone. This, the eternal blessings are guaranteed. So now what? We continue to let God do all the work. The author of the book of Hebrews encourages us in chapter 12. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. The eyes of faith remain centered on the greater bronze snake, Jesus. With our eyes focused on him, we are content. We're content knowing that the same God who provided for our much more important spiritual needs will no doubt provide for our physical needs as well. We're content knowing that the God who endured the cross when the time was exactly right will see to it that our time of grace will be fruitful. We're content enjoying the blessings of the cure, eager to point others to that same eternal cure. God dealt with that ancient serpent whose lies cursed mankind with the poison of sin. He told him this, he will crush your head. Jesus accomplished that. He crushed the serpent's head. His death was really the ultimate victory against the serpent. His resurrection made that certain. Although the serpent's venom is fatal, the antidote is eternal. The antidote completely undid the damage caused by the serpent. The serpent's venom is no match for God's cure. Jesus is our eternal antidote. In him, death's sting has been removed, and the grave is nothing more than a sleep. In him, we have eternal life. Amen.